And we've got that. Okay, we're going to click on that. As it's slowly coming up, it should come up now. There we go. We should have some images now. And what we what we should see is some images come up on the screen. A bit slow. Gallery. So we've got some nice images in the background there. And we're going to start by looking at this one. And we're going to go to visiting an INA site on Hollyhead. So I'm going to probably keep saying, Ellen, you know, if it's, is it sounding clear? Just, just let me know if it's not. Okay. So one, one, of the, one of the things that one of the things that, that is really topical at this minute is how influential was Roman civilization on Britain. Because for many years, when people talk about Roman Britain, they they think they, they almost think that everybody's wandering around in togas and it's about Roman roads, Roman coins, everybody's living in a Roman villa. There's walls everywhere, there's ditches everywhere. You know, people are very much speaking Italian, but that's not actually the real situation. This is actually a village, Hollyhead Mountain. And it's referred to as the Hollyhead Mountain Hut Circles, and there's lots of them. There's up to 50 of them on Hollyhead Mountain in one location. And most of these houses continued all the way through the Roman period. And this is this is rather rather interesting be simply because the roman era came and people thought well you know we'll just carry on any way that we choose fit so they were still living in round houses lots of people they weren't living in square houses or rectangular houses oh. and one one of the things is that we, we, we see this as against the grain, very, very much against the grain. So I'm going to just ask uh, Pat a question. Did you, did you visit this site with us in North Wales, Pat? Were you actually on that trip? I remember something about an old place, yeah? The things inside. <laughs> an old place, things inside. Place, now, things inside, yeah, like weaving and... Uh, uh, Hang on a minute. Um, hang on. Let, let me let me let me get this right. Let me get this right. We went to. It was the trip that more people were meant to go on, but we had a minibus and there was like seven of us on it. We went to North Wales, and uh, lots of the regulars weren't there. But Bill didn't even go on this one, um, and we we visited like a, a very odd place, and it and it was just on the side of the road, and there was a lot, like a little museum nearby, and. And it was, you know, it, it was new for me. I, I'd not really visited the site. And it's referred to as T Mauer, the T Mauer hut circles. And lot these beautiful images here. I'm actually going to show you. Yeah. There it is. So it's right on the end, uh, right, more or less as far as you can go. There's, uh, uh, there's a lighthouse not too far away. And it's the T Mauer hut circles. Now, I, I really enjoyed visiting this site because it was like um, loads of these around, you know, 50 yeah. of them around. Now, so you can remember this. In fact. Yes, I remember it. Yeah, walking all around. Yeah, yeah it was great, wasn't it? It was great going down. Yeah, look, looking at loads of different buildings. Yeah. And and one, one of the things with this site is is that what we did find is that there, there, were, there were a couple of small little square buildings and lots of these sort of round houses, lots of them with sort of little um, little sort of miniature sort of concourses leading to them. Um, and it's sort of overlooking sort of, it's overlooking the landscape in a way. And the precise age of the hut um, group is not clear because it's, it's all the way through the ages and, and massively interesting enough. Um, there's evidence going all the way back to the Neolithic period. So we're talking about 
may be late Neolithic, about 6,000 years ago, into the Iron Age, 2,000 years ago. And then we've got evidence in the, the Roman era, which is great. Um, so we're looking at um, 1,800 years ago. And it's really, really amazing as well. And it's this sort of ties in with uh, one of the other sites, definitely, that we're going to be looking at. And, and also into the post sort of Roman era. And, you know, one of, one of the things that we're really starting to really starting to reequate with what's going on with Britain. And this is, this is, this is one of the things that, that I very much believe and follow that, that everything's transitional. It's almost as if, you know, okay, we're, we're, we're in the Mesolithic period and we'll sort of flow into the Neolithic period and then we'll flow into the Upper Age and the Bronze Age, then the Iron Age, we'll sort of flow into the Roman period and we'll sort of flow into the early medieval period, flow into the period of the Normans. And um, instead of actually having sort of key sort of, you know, we've got the Roman era and we've, we've got we've got the early medieval stroke dark ages and we've got the medieval period and, 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 and that type of thing. Everything sort of um, goes into each other. Everything sort of flows into each other. So, so what, what we've got this, with this, we've got over 50 buildings, 50 buildings that have been recorded and excavated. 50 of them, absolutely amazing. And um, is that you, Roger? Are you still with us, Lawrence? The man ain't talking to me. Um, lots of these buildings have, have been excavated from the 1860s. So, you know, we, we're, getting, we're getting lots of data, lots of information. Um, and we've got really modern stuff as well from the 1970s and 1980s. And um, what, when, they, um, when, when you're looking at these, when you're looking at this evidence and you're looking at these reconstructions and you're looking at this, what they've done, they, they've decided to um, allow um, a level of conservation, allow a level of um, reconstruction. So what you are seeing is most of this is obviously based on the archaeology, but some of this has been lightly reconstructed, which, you know, some, you know, it's difficult to say what, what, is, what is the real, you know, McCoy, but most of what you are seeing there is is what they found of what they excavated and it's likely that there might be dozens and dozens more of these buildings out there so if we if we if we think about this going back to the reconstruction and we, we think about these buildings you you've got a low wall as established covered with a conical roof um a turf or a thatched roof now when you're looking at reconstructions, it's always done with a pinch of, pinch of salt, because I can assure you that building a structure like this is very, very, very difficult. Um, and I, I should know about that, shouldn't I, Alan? <laughs> yes. Building a roundhouse myself. And the roof isn't exactly like this, is it? It's more or less flat, because... Yes. You know, it's it's not exactly flat, but it's more or less flat because to build a roof like this, you're using a lot of materials. And so some of you are thinking, well, hang on, we're supposed to be talking about the Roman era and so on. And I'm just thinking, well, this is all going on in the Roman era. They're obviously the Roman era, AD 43 to 476 AD. So we've sort of established that. And but lots of people are just basically thinking, well, you know, over there, right, near this site, well, not near this site, but Hollyhead itself, this is Hollyhead Island, um, and, and, and what, what you've got is, is on the northeastern side, um, I think I've got their location right, um, and you, you've actually got Hollyhead itself. I think I've got northeastern, right? But uh, you've got Hollyhead, modern Hollyhead itself. Northwestern, thank you for that correction. Oh, it's sort of, yeah, a little bit further over that side rather than that side, yeah. So if we, uh, I'm glad you got that correction there. Um, sort of a little bit sort of above where that red dot is, but sort of, yeah, that's right. Not above the red dot, you aren't getting this mixed up now, but sort of on, uh, yeah, over on the um, Northwestern side, you're right. You are right. And interesting enough there that there's, there's, a, Roman, there's a Roman fort there. There's a square 
Roman fort that was, that actually had port access from the from the the sea itself, and um, <laughs> that's 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 a site that is very nearby, but not exactly nearby. It's not on a doorstep, but you know you've got to go for a little bit of a walk there. But you're thinking, well, you know, Roman civilization is only down the road, so why isn't it they didn't go to these these places and just say, you know, why don't we actually build like us? And people said, no, we we we're, we're just gonna we're going to sort of pay our taxes and we're just going to continue as we are. And this is this is very much what was happening. This was very much what the what the Roman era was like in Britain. Um, and lots of people, lots of people who actually study this period, like me, but lots of other people who, who are sort of study this period um, and they 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 think about the period and um, they say, oh, um, you know, um, it, it's archaeologists like me always always say, you know, the, the Romans are here, there, and everywhere. Well, if you've got a Roman coin, they're there, isn't they? Uh, if you've got a Roman bit of pottery, they're there. But they're actually physically there. Uh, one one of the things that I do say with with these types of sites is that um, the nearest these people might ever come to is if they visited the Roman fort at Holyhead. Um, the little tiny little Roman fort at Holyhead, which is a very tiny garrison. That's the nearest that they 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 got to meeting a Roman who didn't actually who wasn't actually from Rome itself, and so what we, what we do what 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 I say as as an author and um, who's written a number of books on the the Roman era, and um, what I say is that it's a way of getting people to understand where we are in history. So if I basically said, oh, by the way, we're, we're looking at the period. 100 years AD, and people would say, well, what's that? All right, what is it? So if you say, I'm looking at the Roman era, they know precisely where you are. And this is what we do. We, we, we use a guide to sort of show you where we are in history, right? You'll be surprised to hear that even people in the Second World War in Germany didn't really know that the war was going on. There were places in Germany that didn't know that the war was going on because they were in the woods somewhere and nobody, nobody came up to them. It's true, it's actually the case. People could be in the Vietnam War and there'd be a little uh, village over there that nobody ever went to, right? But you're still in the Vietnam War. You're still you're still sort of um, um, in the Second World War, right? Even though you weren't affected by it. I know that sounds nuts, but you know th there were people who weren't affected by these events. And most people were, but, but, but what I'm trying to get at is not not everything's Roman. As you can clearly see, there's, there's a there's a clear difference with all this than sort of a square Roman fort and whatever. But 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 one thing that these people started to think they they started to they started to emulate sometimes to you know they might take they might take their chickens to market and they might come back with a Roman coin, or they might take a cow to the market and they might come back with a load of pottery full of grain, or they might take their grain to market and the wheat and somebody's going to say oh actually look look. Look, mate, why don't you use a little bit of barley and plant barley? So people you plant barley and it's a lot better than their ember wheat or einkorn or, or, or maybe anything else that they're they're planting at the time. So, so that's sort of Romanization. It's a it's a Roman Romanization, but you can clearly see they're still living in roundhouses. Every single one of us one of them is native, but this is how we do it. And I, I actually get criticized for this. You know, people say, oh, you know, you're obsessed by the Romans and it's all about the Romans with you. But it's, it's not it's not all about the Romans with you. It's just that that's that's really wrong. And when I when I go to these places, I, I almost I almost feel when, when you go to a place like this with me, it's always, you know, we drop the Roman stuff and it's like this is happening in the Roman era. But look how people lived. You know, they, they didn't wander around in togas. Right. Maybe one woman had a toga, maybe, maybe whatever, but maybe somebody had a Roman knife. Maybe somebody had a Roman scythe. Oh my God, a scythe, completely, you know, really nice, chunky scythe. Obviously, I don't know anything about scything, do I, Alan? Nor does Gary. <laughs> um, so, and, 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 and one other thing that I'm going to say, one other thing that is quite, which is quite um, controversial in some ways, when 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 Roman civilization hit our shores, guess what we did with the Roman civilization? We made it our own. So people, instead of people, people might build a um, square or 
square building with a with a central heating system and but they might put thatch on the roofs instead of Roman tile um instead of Roman clay tile or, or Roman sandstone tile and we're we're influencing them and they 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 might turn around and say oh you know um you you don't have any local gods that we're interested in and then local people say yes we do look at aqua sulis which which is bath the romans took on that god and made it their own so and and they they obviously found an area where there's really nice warm uh water um and they they had a um you know bath itself so so in many ways it's it's a bit it's a bit there and it's a bit there you know we're, we're mixing things around a real cosmopolitan sort of taste to roman britain um, and I've got to be very, very careful what I say now because um, th this is th this this itself is not this. This is another one of those buildings at Timau, and you can clearly see as it starts to overlook the sea. This is our Timau site um, on on um, our our Holyhead um, Island, and um, you know when I use the word cosmopolitan. Some people think I'm socialist and they think I'm woke and they think, you know, and I, I start saying that there were black people in Britain in the Roman period. We've got evidence of Chinese people in, in Britain in the Roman period, in the Roman era. And uh, people say, oh, my God, he's, he's signed up to this woke thing. And actually, the archaeologist tells us that we've got three Chinese, three people of Chinese origin in London in around 200 years A.D. You know, lots of the people that were in the Roman military had very dark skin, right? And and maybe one or two of them may have taken local wives. And in in, in oh, Britain, Britain has always been like a, this cosmopolitan place. But some people really hate that idea on the right wing, and people on the left wing think I'm not going far enough. But what I'm I'm an archaeologist principally. But if I want to take this further, I can take put my, my acting hat on and just sort of act this out um but somebody else has just joined us pat can you can you add them on mm -hmm. yep 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 is it rog oh i didn't look <laughs> wicked whoever that is it's, it's probably rog it's probably rog so this this itself this itself takes us on to the next side is that you roger yeah finally made hey, it roger, baby. Oh, hey put the way rog but John, John, by the way, Rog, Lawrence is with us tonight as well, somewhere. Is he still with us, Lawrence? Still here. Well, hey, uh, this is Dirty Rog. Dirty Rog has just joined us. And this is Lawrence. Hi, uh, Lawrence. You're not coming up very loud, it's me, is it? Oh, no, it's probably Rod. you, Rog. Rog, uh, John. Hello, Rod. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Raj? This hey, is Lawrence. Lawrence. I can uh, hear you, yes. <laughs> this is Lawrence in Londinium. <laughs> uh, La La Lawrence, is Lawrence, is a, Lawrence that can actually speak um, a fluent Sharikam, right? Um, can you hear Lawrence? No, I'm Jochen Varachi. I'm a Rohit. Yeah. Um, Jochen um, the Barrett now. Jochen the Barrett now, Roger. Yeah. I am. Right, okay then. So uh, this built this building itself. Uh, Roger, we were talking about uh, we're, we're we're on the Roman era at this minute, and uh, you know we, we um, you know we we're, we're not going on until too late tonight. And uh, I'm glad, Roger, you've got your technology to join us. We're at the Team Mauer site, and uh, Roger, I do believe that you weren't. Well, I don't not sure whether Roger you were on a Holly, you were on a Hollywood Hollywood Hollyhead um, um, excursion, which was quite some years ago. And uh, I don't think you were on this one, Rog. But um, anyway, I know Pat was. But I was just saying that that most things in the Roman era um, weren't Roman at all. Uh, there, there was lots of, you know, there was lots of sort of, um, you know, here we are. Um, this, this is this is Britain, and you know, we, we're we're basically uh, we're carrying on with our normal lives. But one thing that did change, if you noticed, in, as a Roman era started coming off, people started to take on this idea of having square storage buildings, right? Whether this is actually anything really to do with the Roman era 
and, and having like straight boundaries and so on. Whether this has anything to do with Romanization or, or, or Roman ideas, but actually standard to create a straight line, right, with this sort of building here is rather interesting where, where there's the straight line. Um, those that have been along to my lecture, I know Roger did it for a while. Uh, we, we, we followed the line. We, we, we sort of did Tim in goals line. Everything sort of links, everything's in, in integral. Um, you know, we're talking about, about Bruegel's harvester where everything sort of intermingles, interbreathes. And when people start to think about the Roman era like that, they start to understand all of history because all of history is, is what it is, all of history. In, in the period of the Neolithic period, there were, there were people who still did a bit of hunter-gathering, right? Um, if, for example, in the medieval period, some people um, still used flint. Well, you know, when was the last time flint was used? I actually used flint when um, to, uh, with, with a piece of iron. Right when I was making fires, when I was a reenactor, um, and you know, you know, it, lots of things, things sort of interbreathe, intermingle. The next site that we're going to look at is this site. Now, can you see that there? That there's there's sort of lines and sort of divisions in buildings and so on. Well, um, you know, my my degree is is on lines, right? <laughs> I know it sounds strange, um, but but one of the things was that my degree was specifically about inter was particularly about division within buildings how buildings divided and how space changed now this site is at Tricary, right i showed you the location last week right but if you go to the little bit of a map here so if you go um uh, down below uh Carnarvon there you've got the sheen peninsula right uh, and then what you've got you've got this beautiful site at Triacary, um, and it's on the north part of the Fiend Peninsula, and it's it's absolutely amazing, amazing location. It's it's on a ridge associated with sort of three three sort of hillocks um, o overlooking um, the, the great sea to the north. This site is massively intriguing for me, and and it's it's got this it's got this huge. You can see you can see the wall either side. This huge wall. Um, it's got, look at that wall, massive, huge wall, really, really impressive, really, really interesting, interesting site. Now, this site itself is so, so interesting and, and, and so, so intriguing uh, because not many people have actually been to see it because, unfortunately, um, unless, unless you've got a good constitution, uh, you park your car, uh, you can see all that there, can't you? Uh, you park your car uh, below this. Um, and then you sort of you could sort of go around in a zigzag and eventually you come up a path there, the path on the left hand side of the screen. You go in the entrance entrance way, right? Guess what some numpty actually did? I decided to take two people with me and we went up the sheer sort of um the, the side of this, right? It took us 45 minutes to get to the top. And then somebody turned around and said, Well, you could have gone the easy way. We went the easy way back, actually. And um, and it was it, it was really, really odd climbing up to this site. And this site itself, as I mentioned last week, because I said I was going to do this um, last week, this, this, this site itself is, is, is one of those um, sites that seem to go on forever in history. Um, it's, it's known as Triacary. It, it seems to go on forever. Now, um, it, it's... Dating back to the Iron Age, it probably goes back much earlier as well. Um, and the name means, interestingly enough, the town of the giants. Um, the chat town of the giants, simply because it's up there um, and people are building this, this, this wonderful landscape of archaeology. And, and it's a whopping... Um, 50 meters short of 500 meters above sea level. That's 450 meters above sea level on the slopes of Ir um, Eiffel, um, a mountain on the north coast of the Clean Peninsula in Gwynedd. Now, I, I had been to North Wales quite a number of times because I actually used to live in a place called um, Penogroes. And, um, and 
I never went to the Fiend Peninsula. It was like over there, that bit that sticks in sticks off into the sea that nobody ever goes to. It's got a cricket and, and so on. Um, so I went to this site and, and it was it was really, really interesting. And what 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 I was I went there, uh, I actually went there to do a film for a for a um for a french film festival we, we we didn't we didn't get any anywhere with it but um you know there i was talking about the site and i was just i i was talking um in these buildings and you can see you can see the bits where you've got the initially you've got these circular houses and then somebody comes somebody comes along and says actually we'll put walls across them we'll put divisions in the buildings now to have divisions in buildings is, is an innovation that we see more and more in the Iron Age. And but well, by the time we get into the Roman period, it, it's up there. You know, you're dividing buildings, uh, you're, you're, you're putting a wall across there, you're, you're putting doorways, you know, it's it's massive, much more of a sense of perspective by the time you get into the Roman era properly. You know, it's like it's like local people who built in the Roman way, i.e., the fort at at now on on the mainland, which isn't too far away, the, the fort at Carnarvon. And now there's lots of stone walls and straight stone walls and stuff there. And we're starting to find out that there are one or two Roman villas um north of Aberystwyth now as well, which we didn't know about years ago. And one site, oh god, I, yeah, I, I I'm um one site that we're going to actually look at next week is Pomanamur. And uh, it's a shame. I'm, I'm really hoping that um, we will start next week at seven o'clock. Hopefully there will be no more fox attacks from uh, fox attacks on my turkeys. But we will be looking at Pomanamur next week. That is an amazing site. Right? It's hugely, massively amazing. Um, and um, that, that's, that's, that's got real massive implications. Uh, the reason I mention that is because it's a site that starts uh, that, that sort of gets big in the Roman era and then slips into this sort of period of um, early medieval uh, illumination, King Arthur, Dark Ages, and all that type of stuff. So this site again, what we're starting to see is is we're starting to get real massive more divisions within these buildings into the Roman period. As I say, it's starting off in the Iron Age, but into the Roman period, straight lines, walls. You can see that you've got a circle, as, it, as I say, it, it's clearly there. Um, and a bit like this previous site, the TML. And again, looking at that, and, and it's, it, it's, I tell you what, as an archaeologist, I'd hate to excavate here because it's like stone everywhere, you know? Um, and oh. so what, what we do find, we have this Iron Age site. It, it's 450 meters above the sea. And, and, and this itself, there, there was we get archaeological dating evidence here, of obviously from from the Iron Age, at uh, two hundred years um, BC, so two thousand two hundred years ago, and then when we get into the Roman Roman era, what what we get is that this this is a massively important site in the Roman era. And you're thinking, hang on a minute, right? Well, come again, come again. They're building Hadrian's Wall. Uh, they're building Roman villas, right? And this and that. So why are people actually living here? But they are. They are because because you know when when my history teacher was wrong when when I turned up in school one day and I said oh uh, Mr So and So we actually called him Eugene um, that wasn't his surname but you know uh, we used to say that because that was a name that he didn't like people to know but I said well what happened between the Roman era and uh, the Normans he said nobody lived in Wales however right. He said that because lots of the sites that, that were reoccupied after the Roman era were actually sites like this. But the difference with, with this site is this was actually used in the Roman era, right? Uh, and you're thinking, well, what, you know, what's going on here? Well, why is going on? Let's give a little bit of information about Clare Carey. Um, and, and, and again, reminder of the, the English yeah. name. Again, Town of the Giants, right? Um and you you got Bacodia the Garras on 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 Anglesey, uh, which is the uh, giant's apron, which is odd. There's lots of things about giants. Um, is and 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 again I, and again one of the um, one of the things that I I like doing is occasionally flicking through books 
not flicking on the internet and looking at YouTube videos because, you know, like oh. me and everybody else, people on YouTube, we, we repeat the same thing. Somebody's saying something, go for it. Oh, I thought somebody said something. I thought somebody said Carl. Anyway. Um, now, Ellen, have you ever been to this site? No. Doesn't it look spectacular? Brilliant. And did you know this existed up until I mentioned it last week? No. And you know what? If you asked me, did I know this site existed six years ago, I'd have said no as well. I, I got this. I, I had a book that I bought for uh, Michelle that was about the um oh god i bought a book from michelle that was published by the um royal commission on ancient historical monuments and when i opened the book this was this the, the aerial view this isn't it but this the aerial view this is one of the first images of saw in a book so the settlement as we know is surrounded by stone walls that are largely intact and which reach up to four meters in places still today Four meter tall wall. You can imagine. You can imagine. We um, we we got this slope, and then we got to clamber over the wall to get in. So, um, you know what what we did? We came in from this that that side there at the back. We come up there, and we had to go over the wall. And my daughter was with me as well. She 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 was she was the camera girl, and um and uh, it was like she then she realised that there was an easy way back, and uh, she wasn't too impressed with her dad. Didn't speak to me for an hour then. Uh, within the walls are ruins of about 150 stone houses. You got it right, 150 stone houses. Now, what one thing that we one thing that we we know is that um, th there's an absence of roofing material. So it's likely that the roofing material would have been roofed with turf roofs or fat roofs. Now. Ellen, I've sort of realized it was probably um, a fact. And the reason why, removing the amount of turf for 150 conical shaped houses is a lot of turf, isn't it? Yes. Wouldn't it have been easier just to use thatch? Depends where you get the thatch from. Oh, God, go with the thatch, love. Okay. A anyway, um, so what we, th what we think is that you know, there's 150 stone houses here. We, we, were they all used at the same time? Well, probably not all used for habitation. Maybe some of the houses were used at one stage and then they were used to store animals. It's said by the very learned historian jo Jonathan Davis, um, no longer with us, sadly. He, he said that, um, you know, 400 people lived here in the Roman era. Um and he also says this. Now, were they actually living here? That, that, that's just sort of questioning in your mind. Jonathan Davis said, suggests that because the settlement is so far above sea level, again, 450 metres, the hut served as habitation for summer shepherds who also had winter dwellings in the lowlands. And you're thinking, why would... What, uh, hang on a minute. Shepherds, where would what? they keep their sheep? You know, and you're just thinking, well... We're not really getting that. We're not really understanding what's going on with this site, which is a shame. And me disagreeing with Jonathan Davis is, is quite a thing, you know. Um, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to think it, there was something else going on here. And this is in the Roman era. There's something more pressing why people lived here. Did they live here because they were being attacked by people, all the rest of it? Well, in the Roman era, no, this was already there. And you're thinking, well, there's got to be a reason why people are living here. And also water. You know what? My my animals, my sheep, do, do drink a lot of water. Well, and I've only got nine of them. And, uh, well, I've, I've actually got three sheep that these people have actually kept. Uh, little weird, evil little things with horns. But, um, but where are you going to keep all the animals if you're shepherds, right? For those questions. So th this, this site itself... Um, you know, has actually been made popular by various writers. And one writer was called Thomas Pennant in his tours of Wales. Never heard of this site at all until six years ago. Its location and importance have attracted visitors for years. The hill fort has recently been the, the site of conservation work and footpath maintenance. And an extensive survey was made at this site in 1956. And I would advise 
if you could ever get to this site, actually go to it, right? You know, year, years ago, somebody actually suggested a very, a very, um, very nice chap. He's no longer with us. And he, and he used to sit in a room with Pat with me, Jim Ross. And um, Jim Ross said to me, took me aside one day, he said, that, he said, look, Carl, right, why don't you hire, hire a big bus, right, and um, take a load of people around Wales uh, for a week, visiting all these places, right? It's a good idea, um, but that's maybe probably not going to happen, but but you can see, but you can see that this you could go, you could come up with a list. I reckon, right? I reckon that I could find I could find ten major sites in Wales that not even I know about, right? And I could take you all there, and you none of you will have visited any of those sites before. I reckon they're out there, and I will find them one day. Um, right. Well, we'll naturally we'll naturally ask questions, and uh, not too far off actually. Uh, because I said I, I said I wanted to sort of aim to finish at um, eight forty five, and um, and I and we'll we'll go for questions then. So if anyone's got any questions on these three sites, and uh, I know Lawrence Lawrence isn't able to join us next week, which is a bit of a shame. But if he could if he could try and just join us for just ten minutes, that would be great. Um, and I hopefully you're joining us next week as well, Roger. I don't know if anyone knows of this site and i don't think it's fair for me to ask you if you know of this site right but it's it's actually um uh, it's actually quite a, a famous site um and this is actually on anglesey and we'll, we'll show you where it is look at that amazing isn't it this is actually on anglesey another site on anglesey an amazing site on anglesey and i will say guys i've been to the other two sites ty kerry and uh, I've been to the our site on Hollyhead. Hang on a minute. Hey, um, Ellen, can you come on a minute? I'm here. Um, Ellen, you know when you corrected me earlier on and you said that Hollyhead was um, on the northwest? It is. Yeah. What was it showing, what was it showing there on the northeast? No, it's the northwest. Northeast. That's the northeast. Oh, Our head is on the west side of the island. No, I was talking you about the what? island, just Hollyhead Island. I wasn't talking about Anglesey. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise. I didn't My know there God. was an island. I thought it was part Anglesey was all one island. No, it's two islands. Yeah, Hollyhead, Hollyhead. Sorry, I didn't know. My God, you've ruined my lecture, right? I believed you because I thought you knew what you knew about. I was right all along. Well, I presumed that uh, no, Anglesey I was all one I said, island. Ellen, Ellen, I said it's two islands. I said Hollyhead Island. Yeah. Is that an island there, isn't it? It is an island. Well, it, well, put it this way, it's now linked to the mainland by a, a Triado Bay, but it was an island. It was an independent island once. Oh, nice. You nice. bunch of numpties. Know your geography. Oh. Hey, the Explain island of is not an island, though, is it? What? No. The Isle of Dogs isn't an island. Barry Island used to be an island. Yeah, what about the Isle of Dogs? I don't care about the bloody Isle of Dogs. <laughs> the Isle of Dogs. The Isle of Dogs is an island. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? My guys, right? Look. John. Look. Shut up, John. Right. When is an island an island, right? An island was an island. It's like the Isle of Thanet. That was an island once. But it's now called Planet Thanet. And, and the Isle of Dogs. The Isle Shut of Dogs. The Isle of Dogs. Years ago, Britain was an island. Go on, Lawrence. Lawrence has disappeared. We've upset him. No, I'm still here. I'm saying to you, the Isle of Dogs is actually an island in the middle of London. So that's not an island. So why? Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. You really, I've really screwed her up now. So the Isle of Dogs is not an island. It is an island. No, it's not. Because there's water around it. There's water all around it. The river turns around the south, the east, and the west, and the canals are on the uh, north side. 
Do you know? Do you know what they used to say? You know when that BNP member was elected in the beginning of the nineties, they used to say if you go to the Isle of Dogs, you've got to go right, right, and right again. Right. Anyway, I, I had to put that joke in there. Right. Let's carry on, guys. Oh my God, my head's gone. Right. So, so what? What we've got? We've we've got this wonderful site. Absolutely, for me, this is this is amazing. But basically, what it shows, it shows round buildings, um, alongside rectangular buildings in the Roman era. So in other words, there were people saying there was that Ellen would have lived in a roundhouse. I would have lived oh, in a roundhouse. But Roger, because he's he's a bit posh, he would have lived in a bloody square thing. Um, and Pat, because oh. she's from the United States. Shut up. And John. John would have lived with Pat. Oh. Hang on. I'm, I'm sure Pat's husband's called John. No, he's called Richard. Never mind. Um, anyway. Oh, God, this is really breaking down now, and it? My head's gone. Right, so this is known as a din um, sluggy. A din sluggy, right? You could prob probably translate the word din um, as meaning as meaning sort of fortified place or as in, as in done, din, done. Um, and it's, and done. in the listings, it refers to this as a hut circle site. Um, but it, it, you can clearly see that as a hut circle, right, you've got square and rectangular buildings, right? Um, and this is this is near uh, a place known as Molfra. Now, this I you know this this site for me, I, I I'd love to go to this site. It it looks really, really interesting. Um, and you've got these these look at that there look at look at the way that that is I, I think that's great that that's that's amazing um and excavations in 1905 1907 produced hundreds of wait for it what did it produce hundreds of statues of lloyd george maybe it didn't it produced hundreds of roman period pottery from the 200s and the 300s right um and this I, I I really wish I could have um, showed you an image of this. Uh, we, we've got we've got one pottery example of this um, with with lots of pottery that has actually been repaired with iron clamps, right? So um, I, I, I'll show you that I'll show you that when when we when we move the images. Um, Ellen, remind me how you put pottery together using iron clamps, right? Right, so you got to remind me about that. Anyway, so they excavated this, and they excavated this in 1905, 1907. Um, animal bones were also found in amongst this, and um, and they do believe that look, some of the animal bones were actually amazing enough musical instruments. So we 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 think that the early origins of the site were were of the Iron Age. Um, and what what we do know is in amongst these buildings. What we have is evidence of domestic buildings um, and evidence of iron working um, and smithying and smelting. So, so they're working iron at this site, which sort of ties in with the, the tradition of, you know, um, that there's, that there's copper mining nearby, isn't there? Um, but they're, they're iron working here. They're, they're, there's, there's, there's smithying, there's smelting, there's all sorts of things. So this is a massively important um, site um, in the Roman era, but we do know, despite the many Roman finds, the origins of the settlement go back into the Iron Age, uh, when this was a small farming community, probably without the wall going around it, right? And probably the guy, the people who owned this, they said, oh, you see the Roman fort down the road, right? Well, not too far down the road, yeah. Um, there, there was a Roman site at Paris Mountain, so it's not far away, in the centre of the island. Um, and, and they said, look, you know, over there, they, they've got this like straight wall. We're going to do a bit of that as well. So um, so from excavation, it seems that the, the round structures um, were probably houses. Um, and, and then they believe that the rectangular ones were barns or workshops. But then again, I might think that maybe the, the, the round ones from an early period, I don't, I don't maybe thought it was the other way around, maybe, but there's no there's no. There's no uh, model. There's no, there's no sort of setting rules for, for all of this. For a Roman site, much remains visible of, above ground, including the enclosing walls um, and the foundations of many buildings, as you can see. 
uh, many, many of them um, with substantial and well-made foundations constructed from the local limestone. Um, and the outer protective wall is almost intact, although much reduced in height. Uh, Bin um, Fligge, um is situated on a low hill with good views over Anglesey and a reliable source of fresh water nearby. The hill is now overgrown with sycamore and ash, as you can see, uh, but, it, prob it, but uh, it is probable that when it was occupied, the village would have had uninterrupted views all round. Um, and when you think about this, this is similar to, uh, when you think about this, this is similar to like a tri-kerry where it looks out over the landscape, again, with a wall around it, again, with an entrance. Um, and this is very different from this site, which is at Team Mauer. And when you, when you think about this and you think about um, how all these three sites tie in, um, you know, this this did this had an uninterrupted view of the landscape, but didn't have a wall around it. It didn't have a ditch around it. So so then the question is, then the question is, right? All of these sites sort of being used at the same time. Lots of them go into the Iron Age, and lots of them continue and whatever. Um, this didn't have defenses around it, right? So um, the the defensive wall already existed here when the people lived here. So this, this, this already existed from the Iron Age. Um, and then you're thinking, you're thinking then this site has got like a defensive wall around the outside and, and who is going to attack you on Anglesey? And then the question is, may, maybe, maybe what's going on is that it's like a status thing. You know, somebody down the road has got a wall. Uh, we've got to have a wall as well. And, 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 it, and it's likely that, um, you know, th th this, this was, this this was the type of thing that was actually going on. Um, loads of people were doing different things in the Roman era. Some of them being very Roman, others being not Roman, others being like our friends, for example, um, at Timaua, almost carrying on regardless, carrying on regardless of what's going on around them. But but nevertheless, they're living in Roman era Britain, um, and the only thing the only Maybe a modern parallel for this uh, would be uh, modern day India, where you've got Delhi and you've got Bangalore and you, you've got all these wonderful places in, in um, India and you've got roads and you've got railways and you've got cars and electricity, broadband and all the rest of it. Right. Um, and, and, you, and you've obviously got an elected government and so on. Um, and then you go then you go up towards the Hindu Kush. And there are villages with no electricity. There's no roads. Uh, people are living in very basic situations, um, but they're part of the Indian world, right? And you're thinking, well, how is that? But lots of these people choose to live or continue to live that way. And it's exactly the same when we look at the Roman era. So what we're going to do now, as I said, I wanted to try, try and keep this to where we were today. And again, looking at some of these images again, looking through them, Again, enigmatic site at Tri Kerry. We're going to um, ask questions now, and and there's a question um, that I've got to answer myself that Ellen needs to remind me of. Um, again, a little bit of an entrance there. Looking forward to next week as well, and having your company next week at seven o'clock, guys. Um, and again, uh, um, Din my guy, and and I would very much advise if you ever go to Anglesey, go and see these two sites, even if you don't visit Tri Kerry. And then if you go to Anglesey, right, go and visit the go and visit the Roman fort that is actually on uh, the west coast of um, Hollyhead Island. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's actually on the east coast. Sorry about that, uh, Ellen. Um, oh, I'm going to never let you forget that one. Um, then again, you're never going to forget me. Um, so anyway, so what we're going to do, we're, we're going to call that a day now and um, and any questions. But before we do those questions, Ellen, what's that thing that I asked you to remind me of? Thing, uh, pottery repaired by iron clamps. Oh, let's do this. Let, let's just get on to it. Let, 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 let's just do this one. Oh, uh, oh. John, hey, right, John. Hey, John. All oh, right, John. Right, okay. No. Uh, Roger, it's good to hear your voice, unfortunately. Right, okay, then. Let, let's uh, let's do the share of uh, the whiteboard, right? And then we're going to do questions, right? Um, so there we go. You can still see me. Hiya, boys. Hi, John. 
Right, okay. Um, I'm never going to do that again in the minibus. Right, okay. So basically, if you if you can oh. imagine, you, 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 oh. you've got um, uh, you, you've got a pot. Let, let's try and draw a pot, right? So you've got... Oh, no, a bowl's easier, isn't it? Yeah, that'll do. Like, oh, Christ almighty. Let's just do that again. No, get rid of that. Go, 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 go. No, no, go, go. Let's draw a pot. This is this is drawing a pot with 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 car. Oh God's sake! Right, forget it. But right. anyway, so um, say for example, um, a bit of that pot broke off. Right. So uh, the way so so you got you got a bit of pottery that's broken off, and the bit of pottery that's broken off is there. So how do you repair that bit of pottery that's broken off? Well, um, what you do, and I, and I will, we'll go into a little bit of detail here. Oh God, I wish I could draw. Um, so, so what we've got, you've got this bit of pottery, right? Um, and what you do, you set it, you, you, you cut a little bit out there, you cut a little bit out there, you cut a little bit out there, you cut a little bit out there. Right, so you're cutting bits out of the pottery. So the place that you're gonna put the pottery, right? Uh, which is in the hole around, right? So what you do, you, you cut out little bits there, a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. So what, what you then do, you will you would then insert a piece of iron into them, right? So you've got a little bit of iron there. You'd insert a bit of iron. But how you'd put that iron in there, you'd actually put it in with lead. You'd actually set it in with lead, right? And um, and usually what you might just do is just put a load of a big chunk of lead in there, right? Um <laughs> I don't, that would keep the pot. I mean, you could put, still put fruit in it and stuff, but it's not going to hold water. But that's basically what that is. Um, iron clamped pottery. And that's what that is. Job done. Right. I'm glad I answered that one. Okay, so what we're going to do. Um, uh, stop. Good. I don't think I'll ever get a job for the BBC now. Anyway. Talking about jobs for the BBC, Lawrence Lawrence is a good is a great supporter of the BBC. He wants to keep it for as long as possible. Lawrence agrees with paying um, a television tax, which he pays every single month religiously. Um, uh, Lawrence, anything you'd like to add tonight? And Lawrence, are you going to be joining us at all next week or no? Do you know what? Uh, he's well. <clears throat> done. Lawrence. Do you know he's gone now? Oh, never mind. Lawrence! Hello. Right, anything you want to add? I had to do say or ask. Ask and add. A ask and add. Um, only that London was a Welsh village before the Romans came. Yay! Yeah, well, well yeah, that's because Lawrence's his ancestors used to live in that village. Isn't that right, Lawrence? They used to live in Wales, of course, but they came here, so um, which is why I don't sound like you. Well, Lawrence, you sound that you've got a really Welsh, good Welsh accent, and actually, Lawrence stood um, for Glad in in um, 2019 in the Vale of Glamorgan. Lawrence, I thought I'd put that in there. Sorry if I've embarrassed you. Then again, I stood for the Senate a couple of years after that in the same place, and you, I had less votes than you. Christ, and I'm from Wales. It's terrible. Um, anything else you want to say, Lawrence, before we finish with you? Uh, no, I can barely hear you, but thanks ever so much for uh, entertaining us tonight. Are you, are you going to be joining us next week or no? See, we can't even hear him. Man. Wait, wait, Lawrence, are you going to be joining us next week? What? John, Lawrence. Yeah. La Lawrence, are you joining us next week? Well, yes. You are. Brilliant. Brilliant, Lawrence. We'll definitely look forward to you, you joining us next week. So what we're going to do, we're going to go on to John. Um, thanks for that, Lawrence. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. Right, John. Hey, John. Roger. John. What? Yeah. Anything well, I've got enough with that for messing around with my muted computer and various codes, verification codes, password, no, yes, no, 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 yes. There's a song and I there. think I got at the end of it interesting. So hope to get a full time next week. 
that, 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 at seven o'clock, definitely next week. Uh, Roger, there's a song there. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Lyrics, right, okay, fine, carry on. You know what, I actually get paid to do this. I don't know how. Right, um, Ellen, anything you want to say? Yeah, you know that, like, uh, the first picture you showed where there you had square uh, storage places and the round huts, and you were saying yeah. that it was slowly coming in uh, the Roman yeah. era. Yeah. It's quite similar to the last hundred years here, really, because a lot of people didn't have electric for a while. They were scared of the electric, especially in the countryside. And the same again, you know, when uh, I'm going to the fashion side of things, but um, women wearing trousers, you still will not get older generation ladies wearing trousers. because. They're stuck Facts. in the way of having skirts, and that was the way they raised. So it takes a bit of time to get into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's true. That's true. Well, you but still, you still don't have electricity in Berlin Bach, so nothing's changed there. <laughs> no, we do have electric. Yeah. We just have a problem with the sky signal. <laughs> I've got to be honest with you. This is really weird. Lawrence has suddenly gone indoors. Right, okay, Ellen. Anything, anything else, Ellen? And no, I was just thinking that it, it does take time to, for things to, like, influence and become mainstream. Yeah. Um, you know, it'll take a long time now for electric cars to come into being, you know, especially around here, where we're in the middle of nowhere, with no charging points anywhere. That's true. It will take a long time for that era to come in and be, you know, and influence us in a way. That's true. That's true. That's true. And it's going to take a long time for us to uh, cope with the Amer invasion of Americans coming over here. There's more Americans in Wales than there are native Wales. Uh, talking about, yeah. talking about Amer Americans, right? Oh. Pat, anything else you want to say, Alan? Yeah. No, no, I'm mm. fine now. Okay. Uh, no, you don't take it personally, Pat. I, 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 I know. Uh, I know you're escaping Donald Trump, so don't worry about it. Right, Pat. Anything? By the way, Pat, you're looking really dishy tonight. That that paint in your bedroom, really, and the house, really, it, great. Painting the room. That's why it's a mess. Painting the room. Thank you, Isabel. I was really right, pleased. Right. Go on. I was really pleased to see the team our huts because I yeah. never visited that. And I didn't remember where it was or what it was, and now I know. So that's great. No. And you've been there, and you couldn't buy a guidebook either. <laughs> just on the hillside, just spread on and on and on. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was a really nice little trip, that. It was nice. It was nice. So uh, any, anything else, Pat? No. No. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, uh, well I'm going to... Um, I've 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 had I've had a little I've had a little turkey at my top. Oh, and and uh, and and and, and uh, yeah. So so she she's she's been no he little baldrick has been at my top, um, getting warm. So um, yes, and 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 then and then the other the other the other turkey. The, this is the other one. There there she is. Oh hello, Mrs. Baldrick. Oh. There, there, there she is. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> so she's she's had she's uh uh luckily luck the, the the thing is right the thing is turkeys must be the only creatures I know right that you can take a chunk out of their stomach right and still survive. Oh, and, sweetheart. Uh, the, the the thing is the thing is I'm I'm getting used to injecting animals and I've 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 I, 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 she wasn't eating, and, and so we had to change her dressing, and we had to sort of clean it all up with new sprays and stuff. Injected her with antibiotics, injected her with um, some painkillers, and as soon as soon as we put the new dressings on, uh, she started gobbling up food. It was great. Oh, and there's no pun there really... about gobbling up food either. It's just, uh... <laughs> I right, didn't so... realise that you lost your other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we did, but we we still got the other one in the in the bushes still still nesting. So, oh, didn't realize so, uh, so so we still got that. Right. So, anyone else want to say anything else? Uh, Roger, 
Ellen, Pat, or no. all Lawrence before we finish? No star. Sorry, thanks, Carl. What I got of it? Oh, no I, see, I told you Lawrence could speak Welsh. I am. Sorry, sir. Um, I'm not all heed. Uh, you can, or if you ever oh, go to Tregaran, it is a um, ma or heed. Oh, sh I'm from South Wales. I can say whatever way I like. Um, no, no. I'm a or heed. I am. So, uh. Hey, anyway, anyway, so I'm gonna. If nobody's got anything else to say, I've been uh, delighted that you've joined us tonight. Shame we didn't have see you next week, Carl. And we'll see state. you all next week. We'll have a full class next week, including Nina. So if nobody's got anything else to say, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a day. Really good to see you, Lawrence and Roger and and Pat and Ellen. Um, and uh, no doubt, um, Diop and um, I'll I'll see you all soon. Nasta, 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 iPhone Lawrence. A bit of a weird picture of Lawrence there. Huh? Anyway, take care, guys. I'm just going to look in the chat box and when we put this out. Um, nothing in the chat box on three, two, one. Nothing in the chat box done. Okay. And don't forget, everyone watching, when we put this out, this wasn't live. This is pre recorded. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's been great having you all on. Um, and I'm going to get back now. Take care. Um, and um, and we'll speak to you all soon. And thank you very much. Don't forget, uh, yeah, like, subscribe, and press the blue join button. Thank you. Bye. More next week. We might put out live next week on Monday at seven o'clock. Thank you for your support. Take care. Bye.